Okay, on the bench today, we have a component curve tracer made with all discrete transistors. Uh, basically, you have a square wave generator, or near enough a square wave generator, fed into a circuit that generates a ramp circuit so that you get a sort of step down, you have a stepper circuit, which, uh, which takes each pulse, incoming pulse, and steps it lower and lower throughout. And that's how you can get the different uh, graduations in the curve. Um, this circuit runs on six volts, although it will operate on other voltages. I'll show you the schematic here. Block that light out. Um, so it can run, it says it can run on six volts, but honestly, uh, you can run on any other voltage. Although, because it's grounded weird, you see this is the scope probe ground where it's supposed to go. This plugs into your, the Y and X, so is the X and Y probes on your scope. So your scope is going to be in XY mode. This is just a multivibrator. Basically, each transistor flip-flops between high and low, VCC and near ground. And when it when this when one of the transistors goes high, it, it yanks the other one low. So you have this like seesaw effect going on. And then this circuit here, you'll see this in uh, any any transistor curve tracer circuit as some variant of of this circuit here. Like this this portion here could literally be a triple five timer. It doesn't matter. Just it needs to generate a square wave of some kind. Well, here's the look on the scope. Here's the only problem with the circuit is. I think it's just some kind of ground loop noise or something, but <laughs> you get this weird oscillation going where it's, yeah, you see the curves, but it's like annoying. And I've done things to try to correct that, and I haven't been able to get rid of it completely, although if you adjust the voltage, you can sometimes get it to go away with certain devices. It doesn't do it with all devices, by the way. So I'm raising it, and of course you increase all the voltages and all the currents, and so you can cover, you know, more component spreads that way. Right now, there's just a signal transistor in there. It's just that one. I got these leads hooked up here so that I can measure uh, power transistors. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so I got a TO3 package, a uh, 2N3055 power transistor hooked up. And if it focuses, yes, that's the look on the screen. Now, that's where the scale was before. Um, that the, the lower it is, sits on the screen, uh, essentially it just shows how much beta it has. That's a bad probe I have, that's why it's doing that. Um, so you can match transistors this way. So if you note how that is on the screen. Now, I just changed it out for another power transistor. And as you can see, it sits just a little higher now. That hump didn't quite make that, uh, that center section. So as you can see, you can match transistors in this way. Um, it, it'd be a little more accurate uh, than an HFE tester because you know how these saturation or these curves near saturation look oh and is if you didn't know already this is mirrored there's no way with the circuit for some reason to get it to actually flip around and look correct unless i i can't invert my uh my x channel here i can invert the y but you know it just flips it upside down it doesn't really help you can do all kinds of devices uh like rf transistors all right, so now in there we have a, oh, what's it called? An MPS, MPS A18, which I think, I don't know if it's specifically designed for RF, but um, it's got decidedly different behavior near the origin here. Uh, it, it's as if the saturation voltage is a lot higher for this transistor, and at higher voltages, and higher currents, the, the constant current capability doesn't seem to be, well, as constant. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a germanium transistor, uh, one of these to be exact. 
Yep, the jitter's pretty annoying. Let me see if I can fix that. Not really. Well, kinda, okay. Yeah, so as you can see, that it, it's almost like a FET. It's almost like a JFET. And then it goes to constant current here. Just so weird, like, I don't know. Now, measuring accurately, like what these steps are, <clears throat> You would first have to measure um, at this point right here in the circuit what those pulses are. Is then you'll know what this voltage will be and what current is going to be going through this transistor. Um, and what the uh, incoming base current is going to be. So you'd have to do a little bit of math, a little bit of uh, back of the envelope calculations to figure that out. But mainly I just use this for you know testing transistors, look, making sure... Uh, that they're matched because it gives a little more information than a, a simple uh, HFE meter as you might have in a multimeter. So yeah, I hope you found this helpful.